Season 41, War Number 1, and we are up against TCN. This time around, my team will be Tigra, Valkyrie, and Odin. Odin's main use is gonna be Synergy for Valkyrie, as well as the pre-fights for a Rich Get Richer fight later. I'm taking Path 5 in Section 1, as well as Path 7 in Section 2, on top of that Doctor Doom and Mordo shared fights. Then I'm taking the future Ant-Man and Terrax mini bosses, and finally that Cork boss with Valkyrie. Quite a few Valkyrie fights this time around, and that is also why I wanted to get the Valkyrie video out before this one. Took a while, but here we are. So up first we have a Venom on the Event Flow Knockdown and right back added nodes, and I'm taking this fight with Valkyrie, and I have placed Odin's Shock Resistance pre-fight here. Because I simply need to put a single pre-fight, doesn't matter which one, to get the Bulwark buff from Valkyrie's Odin synergy. That increases the damage on my special too, and also should make me immune to stun debuffs, although that is bugged at the moment, and doesn't actually do that. Now the game plan here is to just nuke the guy down with some big special 2s into the block, and that's about it. I will not be bothering knocking him down at all. I will simply just do this fight with the protection up, simply because, well, I don't want to lose my buffs by knocking the opponent down with a heavy attack. It turns your buffs into passives, or rather her peers and bulwark buffs into passives, with more potency, but as passives they fall off instead of staying indefinitely. So it's gonna be a slightly slower matchup than you'd normally have with Valkyrie, but it's a very simple fight. I technically could have done this with Tigra, but since this fight has the Force of Will node, Neutralize would not apply at all, meaning I couldn't pause my senses at all, which then again means that I don't do any damage, my power gain doesn't quite work either, right back at it means he's gonna be immune to debuffs basically all the time, making it a very, very bad matchup. Valkyrie does make pretty quick work of it, even with the protection up, but if you need to speed that fight up, you can also throw your heavy attacks. Next up we have a Cassie Lang on the Event Flow Knockdown and Heavy Hitter nodes, and I'm taking this fight with Valkyrie. The game plan here is to hit into her block as much as possible, instead of doing direct hits, because I'm pretty sure she doesn't evade blocked attacks. Now, I'm not quite sure about that, I'm, I'm not too well versed about her abilities so far, I really do need to read up on her a little bit, but that was the plan. I will be building up the bulwark buffs here as well, at least trying to, to increase my chance to shrug off the non-damaging debuffs, so I don't have to worry about the combo detonation, power stings, anything she does really. Once again the game plan would be to just ignore the protection completely, do my damage any way I can by simply hitting her directly, hitting her into block, getting those big special twos, and that's about it. As long as I don't get clipped too much, I should be just fine taking this. And now that I have my bulwarks up, the debuffs are not sticking either, making this fight a pretty simple one. I did make a mistake here, but... I did use an invulnerability boost here, just in case, because this is the first time I have ever fought her in Alliance War, so didn't want to take any chances of getting comboed or anything like that and dying because of it. It ended up being a pretty simple matchup, but yeah, next time I'm fighting her I'm definitely doing some more reading of her abilities, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Next up we have a Doctor Doom on the Hazard Shift Shock and Bleed along with Conflictor, and I'm taking this fight with Valkyrie. I have taken this fight before, and the game plan here is the exact same as it usually is. I'm only hitting into Doom's block to gain power, to stack up my buffs, and then just get into my special to nuking him down with that. Whenever Doom uses his special one, I do need to stay away from him for a while to wait for the aura to fall off, because any contact with Doom while the aura is up has a chance to nullify buffs, 
and since every doom you're gonna be facing in tier 1 alliance wars is sig 200 if he nullifies a buff on you he will also place a shock debuff on you which allows him to doom slap you as well with his heavy attack and since valkyrie doesn't make herself immune to stuns only stun debuffs with the bulwark buffs that's not something she can really avoid so the best way to deal with it is to simply just not touch him while the aura is up. To wait it out, I use the light whiff to set up a parry walk to make Doom simply just become unresponsive. He will simply just walk towards me, chill in front of me for a bit, and then I just dex out when the AI becomes operational again. And that wastes so much time on his aura that Basically one or two times doing that is enough to just wait out the aura completely. Now I did make a mistake there and hit him directly, which of course triggered a shock debuff on me, followed up by Doom slapping me in the face. Luckily it didn't do too much damage, but it was pretty annoying. But fight is almost over, it's been two minutes so it's not the fastest fight, but it is pretty safe as long as you know how to manipulate the AI, at least somewhat. And then we have a Hulkling on the second wind unblockable and power creep nodes and I'm taking this fight with Tigra. And Hulkling is very very simple with Tigra on basically any node on the war map. And this one doesn't really add anything to him. All I need to do is just get to my special 2 and the fight is over. To do that, I went for an intercept to get the neutralize up first, and then held my block to beta heavy attack that I could counter with my heavy. Simply to have the neutralize up when he was pounding into my block, so that he wouldn't gain his pierce or flourish buffs. Now it worked out alright to start with, but when I tried to beta second heavy attack, he just wasn't having it, so I couldn't exactly do this perfectly. Lost some HP due to blocked hits, but it's a quick fight. No risk of dying there whatsoever. Next up we have an Atuma on the second wind unblockable and make a stand nodes and I'm taking this fight with Valkyrie. The game plan here is to only hit into his block to get to my special 2 and to build up my pierce and bulwark buffs without having to worry about the thorns damage at all. Since the thorns doesn't trigger on blocked hits, Valkyrie completely avoids all of it for most of the fight. Before I drop my special 2, I will have to drop my heavy attack to remove the protection, otherwise this fight is gonna take way too long and I'd even risk a timeout since a 75% protection is pretty huge. Now, the biggest issue with Atuma is usually the Thorns damage along with any unstoppables he gets if his hydration gets out of control, but if you're only hitting into his block, he's not gaining that much power, meaning that he can't stack up too many hydrations either, making him a pretty useless defender. Now that being said, he is slightly more annoying to fight with Valkyrie, simply because he does have some bleed resistance with his weakened ability, making Valkyrie's hits into the block a little bit weaker with those instant bleeds. But as soon as I get to my special 2, this guy is just gonna get nuked down so quickly that it doesn't even matter. I'm gonna push him to a special 1 here, baiting it and punishing it with my heavy attack. Now with the Intimidate up, I go in, hit into his block and drop the special to you before the passive Pierce and Bulwark effects fall off. And he just gets nuked down so quickly. Wasn't quite enough to finish him with just a special 2, but a couple hits into a special 1 into the block. And down he goes, and that was a pretty beautiful finish. Valkyrie is just so satisfying to play. Then we have a Mordo on the Rich Get Richer node in section 2, and I'm taking this fight with Tigra. I put on Odin's aptitude and protection pre-fights, 
so that I have more unique buffs than Mordo does. And that allows me to simply just spam special twos, making it a quick fight. Now the aptitude itself doesn't really do anything for Tigra, but the protection is very nice to have, since I do still have two more Tigra fights after this one, one of which I have never done before. Now I do use an invulnerability boost here, simply because, well, Mordo can be annoying, and if I mess something up I might eat a special 3, but other than that, this fight is very very easy and simple to do. I'm not gonna bother baiting any heavy attacks or specials and punishing them with my heavies. There is no need to do that. All I need to do is just drop my special twos, and that's all there is to it. The reach get reach a power gain combined with the power gain from Tigra's Huntress Sense is more than enough to allow me to simply just spam them over and over and over again until the defender falls, basically no matter who the defender is. So, a very simple fight there, Tigra is one of the more fun options for that. And then we have a future Ant-Man on the safeguard miniboss node, and I'm taking the fight with Tigra. Now, I have only fought this guy with Tigra in duels, as well as the event quest when he was around. Other than that, I have no experience fighting this guy, and... It's gonna show. I'm gonna make a pretty big mistake here to start with. I'm finishing my combo here with a medium. He got to his... Whatever that passive is called, which basically means if I finish a combo on a medium, he's gonna passively stun me. And he did. I got punished for it. Luckily not too hard, and now at this point I have to fight under control. Now all I need to do is just spam heavies in the corner, bait special ones, punish them with my heavy attack, and that's all there is to it. The power detonation does make this fight a bit more annoying, since it prevents me from getting to my special twos as often as I would like, and I do need to use a special before it ends, or otherwise I'm gonna take a lot of damage or something along those lines. Again, Future Ant-Man is one of the defenders that I don't really know too much about. I somewhat know what I meant to do against him, but that's about it. I know that as long as I play around the power detonation, I don't have to worry about what it does, and that's fine by me. Now, this fight is going decently well. I got to my special two here, and it's gonna be enough to finish the fight, but it wasn't clean. I definitely need to read up on him as well, and practice some more with Tigra against him, just to make sure I'm not making those mistakes again. Next up we have a Terrax on the Brute Force miniboss node, and I'm taking the fight with Tigra, and I probably don't even need to explain how this fight is gonna go. At this point, we have all seen this before, it's gonna be over in around 15 seconds. I start with an advanced power boost, do two aggro steps to start the fight, to get to my special 2, drop the special 2, and that's about it. If Terrax doesn't fall, he's gonna be close to it, all I need to do is just throw another heavy or two, drop a special 1, and that's it. Now, this specific Terrax was pretty tanky, I must say. He didn't exactly fall in 15 seconds like he usually does, but even then, a very, very quick fight. Zero risk at all. I'm not dying to a Terrax with Tigra ever again. Hopefully. And then we have the final fight of this war. A Korg boss that I'm taking with Valkyrie. And I was very excited to take this matchup. I have been wanting to take a Korg boss for a while. And while Valkyrie doesn't really counter him all too well, the only real thing that Valkyrie does that shuts down one of Korok's abilities is the fact that she can bypass Unstoppable. Other than that, I have nothing to work around his Rock Thorns, I have nothing to work around his buffs or power gain with the flourishes. All I can really do is just play Korok properly, and that's all there is to it. Now, that being said, this fight is extremely risky, for the simple fact that there is the opportunist, or opportunist, I guess, node on the boss node in tier 1, giving the defender plus 50% attack for each buff on them. 
And while Valkyrie does work against Korg, it's not the fastest option. And since I don't have a way to get rid of the buffs, basically if I get clipped once, I'm dead. So, that was exciting to deal with, to say the least. Now, I have taken this guy many, many times in the uh, battlegrounds so far, and that was kinda why I was confident in taking this guy. <laughs> but looking back, I probably shouldn't have. Because, well, an important war, a single mistake and you're dead against someone like Korg with a non-ideal counter. It's not exactly the greatest idea, but hey, so far it's been working great. Now, I was having some trouble with the AI here at the end. I was just trying to play it safe, land some cheeky shallow evades to get my combo going again. And I actually get the fight down in less than two minutes, and I only lost 5% of my HP. I'd say that was one of the cleanest boss fights I have had in a long time, but definitely very, very risky, and I do not recommend it. As for the results, we did end up winning the war 5 to 4. We won by a single death, and yeah, that just goes to show how risky it was for me to take that boss, but since it worked out, I'd say no harm, no foul, I guess, but yeah, probably a better idea to use an actual counter in the future. Probably someone like Diablo. <laughs>